Welcome to Computational Algebraic Topology. Our goal in this lecture is to define and see a few examples of simplicial complexes, which are my favorite bridge from uh, the world of combinatorics to the world of geometry. Let's get started. So, let V be any finite set. And we'll call the elements vertices. A simplicial complex, here is the main definition of this lecture, a simplicial complex K on V is defined to be any collection and I really don't want it to be empty because that would be boring. So any non-empty collection of subsets of V subject to two conditions. The first one is uh, any time you have a single vertex. So for all vertices V and V, the set that just contains that one vertex must lie in K. And the second requirement is that if some subset, let's say tau, lies in k, and we have a smaller set, sigma, which is contained in tau, then sigma must also lie in k. So that's it. These two simple rules uh, define a simplicial complex. Um, there's there's much uh, there's a lot of interesting material hidden behind these two rules. Uh, well, okay, there's more interesting material hidden behind the second rule than uh, behind the first one. Um, if you had an object of this type that did not satisfy the first rule, then you could just build a simplicial complex on a smaller V so that all the singletons were included. Okay, uh, so far we haven't said too much. Um, let's define a few more things. An element sigma in K, which must be a subset of V, is called a simplex. And so far, it is just a subset of a finite set. So there isn't too much structure uh, that that such an element can carry, a simplex can carry. Um, maybe the most important thing about a simplex for us right now is its dimension. Um, the dimension of sigma is def defined to be dimension of sigma equals um, the cardinality of sigma minus one. Okay, now if you take a minute and think about uh, the, re the first requirement, requirement A of definition, uh, of the first definition, um, then you realize that a simplicial complex is guaranteed to have as many simplices of dimension zero as you have vertices in V, because each of those, those singleton sets of cardinality 1 must lie in K, and because the dimension is cardinality minus 1, all these guys end up with, um, with dimension 0. Uh, and once you've assigned a dimension to every simplex in K just by looking at its cardinality and taking one away, uh, then you are able to define the dimension of all of K. So by dimi the dimension of K is given by taking a maximum. So dimension of k is the maximum of dimension of sigma where sigma is in k. Okay, so far so good. Nothing scary has happened. Um, maybe um, if you're patient, you can you can get, get through one more definition and then we'll see a few examples. So 
given simplices, sigma subset of tau in K, we call sigma a face of tau. So this subset relation, now every possible non-empty subset of tau is going to be a simplex in K. So all these are called the faces of tau, regardless of their dimensions. But, um, but the relative dimension, the difference in dimension, is called the co-dimension. So this is a face of co-dimension equal to dimension tau minus dimension sigma. So the co-dimension one faces are obtained by taking the list of vertices in tau and removing a single vertex. Um, the co-dimension two faces are obtained by removing two vertices from tau and so on. Okay, so that was a lot of definitioning. Um, let's make sure we understand what simplicial complexes are by looking at a few examples. Um, maybe the most familiar class of examples comes from um, graphs. So this is a wide and very, very well-loved uh, studied class of objects. And now uh, I don't mean graphs in the sense of a graph of a function where you have a domain and a codomain and some subset of the product. I mean graphs in the sense of combinatorics. So these are, uh, again, uh, pairs of sets, usually finite sets, which I'll call E and V, or maybe in order to be uh, dimensionally accurate, Let's write V and E uh, consisting of a set V of vertices, so vertices same as before, and a set E of edges. And what we know is E consists of pairs of vertices, so that if um, u, v, this pair is in E, then u and v have to be different. So it's quite typical to draw graphs uh, by showing the elements of v, these vertices, as dots, as I'm doing here, and to show now each edge can have um, exactly two vertices that it contains in its ordered pair, and so those are indicated by just connecting the two vertices involved. So this will build a graph. Um, notice that we never have um, anything beyond an edge here, and beyond meaning in a sense of higher cardinality. There's no notion of something that, that uh, has three vertices. It's at most two. So when you look at any such graph, the cardinality of the largest simplex, in this case, is, is two. You can have at most two vertices show up, and therefore all graphs are simplicial complexes of dimension one. So one natural way to think of, uh, okay, dimension less than or equal to one, because it's possible you have no edges and then everything is just a bunch of vertices. Okay, so um, good. This means that the theory of simplicial complexes, whatever that is, completely contains the theory of such, uh, at least of finite graphs. Um, maybe more interesting examples, if you want to go uh, to a higher dimension, is um, fix uh, an integer k uh, bigger than or equal to zero, um, and let the vertex set v be uh, 0, 1, 2, all the way up to k. Then the, um, the collection of all possible subsets of v is called the solid k simplex, the solid k dimension simplex. Uh, so you get one of these for each choice of k, 
And maybe um, in order to get a bit of intuition, I can try and draw them the way we drew graphs here. So for, for k equals 0, k equals 1, k equals 2, and then uh, I'll let you fill up the patterns on your own. So for k equals 0, you have just the vertex set v equals 0. It's just one vertex there. And every possible subset that's non-empty is just that vertex itself. So that's all you get. For k equals 1, you have 0 and 1, and then the, the subset containing both those, the way an edge 0, 1 uh, would be. So great. Now you have... Um, uh, this is what a one-dimensional, uh, it's a graph, as you would expect, because it has dimension one. Um, k equals two is the first thing we're going to see of a higher dimension. So this has zero, one, two, and remember all possible subsets. So zero, one is there, zero, two is there, one, two is there. And now here's the new exciting thing, uh, the triple zero, one, two. Now this is a simplex of dimension two as you can see it takes sort of two dimensions to draw it um, so these are simplices these are simplicial complexes of dimension equal to k so for each k this is a simplicial complex of dimension k maybe i should specify that this is supposed to be one per k. Um, so this is a simplicial complex of dimension k. All right. And the last example of simplicial complexes, by the way, I should specify, I did not stop drawing at k equals two because this construction stops at k equals two. I stopped drawing because the next thing I have to draw would be a solid tetrahedron, and those are sort of painful uh, to illustrate on two dimensional screens. Okay. Um, the final example is same as above. Everything is the same, except I want k to start at 1 now, right? So k starts at 1, um, and now we keep all the subsets as we were doing before. of this set 0, 1, k, but discard the largest subset, which is, you know, everything. Which is, you know, uh, v itself. So, Everything of size, so V has size K plus 1 here. Uh, so everything of size K and below is allowed, but just this V itself we discard. Um, you can check that this still satisfies the requirements of being a simplicial complex for K bigger than or equal to 1. Um, and this is called the hollow K simplex. Um, and you can check because we threw away that large, the unique largest dimensional simplex. This is a simplicial complex of dimension equal to k minus 1, which is the reason we started at k equals 1 instead of k equals 0, like in the last case. And again, uh, here you can draw pictures just as well as you did before. Uh, let me draw a few. In fact, I'll go a little bit further than I did with the solid ones. So for k equals 1, you go back to the uh, picture of the solid k equals 1 simplex, and you remove the largest dimensional object you find, which is that edge. So you just get two vertices. So this one's disconnected, so it looks kind of strange. Um, k equals 2, again, go up to the solid filled-in triangle and then remove the, the three element subset. So all you're left with is a graph. That looks like this. You can see why this is called the hollow version of the picture at the top. And as a bonus before we end the lecture, uh, let me try to draw uh, what happens for k equals three. Now this is going to be uh, the tetrahedron that I refused to draw in the previous example, but now it's hollow. 
So I fancy my chances. If it's hollow, then it has dimension two. So it looks like that. And then you fill in this, these, the, 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 the four triangles uh, uh, over here, but not inside. So it's, it's hollow on the inside. Okay. And of course, you can keep going, but my ability to draw and this lecture will end here. See you next time.